everyone. So October is Black History Month in the UK. I know in the US it's February, March, I don't know. Um, and I know there are so many readathons going on through um, October, there's Victober, um, and I think there's like some Halloween readathons, obviously. But during the month of October, I am going to be specifically focusing on reading books by black British authors, uh, just because, you know, I live in the UK, so it seems quite fitting that this is the month that I should do that. Uh, I really wanted to get this video up ahead of October, but as time would have it, if that didn't happen. So I'm doing it today. Today is actually the 2nd of October, so let's see how quickly I can film and edit this video and get it up. Usually it would be fine, but I've got some other things that also need um, my attention. But anyway, I'm going to recommend, what I'm going to do basically is recommend some books that I have read, but also some books that like are on my radar that I haven't read. Um, I'll try and alternate them, but like towards the end I might just be recommending books that I have just read. So I will be doing about like 10 recommend talking about like 10 books, so I'm recommending at least 10 more books that you can read during um, Black History Month um, in the UK. So the other thing I really wanted to do, I thought what's the point in doing this video without like people being able to like experience this book, whether or not that be during October or just during the other months. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to do a giveaway. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is for at least, well, yeah, basically I will have two winners um, and you can win any of the books that I have spoken about in here, obviously one book each. Um, I will put more like details of the giveaway in the description box down below, but I'm gonna talk about the books first and then in the description box, I will let you know how you can enter that giveaway. In the description box below, I will also leave the link for the Black History Month UK website so you can sort of see what the theme is um, and also all the different things that are happening across the UK. So the first book I'm going to be recommending is I Am Not Your Baby Mother, What It's Like to Be a Black British Mother by Candice Braithwaite. Uh, I have spoken about this book so much. I first read it last year, November for Nonfiction November, which I will be also participating in this year. Um, and this is just a wonderful book. This is called a part, like manifesto part memoir, I think is the actual term for the book. And Candice basically details sort of her life growing up in the UK and her experiences of like other black British mothers that, you know, she sort of had touch points with when she was a kid, but then also starts to talk about when she became pregnant and had her child, um, her first child at least anyway. And yeah, she also talks about like the stats surrounding black British mothers in the UK, which is just incredibly, I was gonna say it's a very interesting topic. It's actually quite sad in many places. There's not that many stats and the stats that are out there are not great. Um, and it's always, it's one of those things that actually I didn't know until people started talking about it because obviously my reference point for um, women who have had kids have been like my sister and my mum and they have always been fine, but that's obviously just part of the statistic and it doesn't obviously reference the people who haven't been fine. Um, but this is just such a great non-fiction book. Like if you're looking for something that just focuses specifically on a topic such as motherhood, this is a really great book to pick up. I have done, I think at least in my November non-fiction wrap up, I spoke about this book in more detail. So if you are interested in learning about this book in a bit more detail, then definitely I will link to that video up in the cards and in the description box down below. So a book I want to recommend that I haven't read, but has been on my radar for the longest time. And actually now now, even more so, I want to read it because it has been updated with a new chapter um, to include the sort of recent Black Lives Matter events in 2020, but also the Windrush sc scandal in the UK, is Black and British, A Forgotten History by David Olusoga. Um, this just sounds like a brilliant non-fiction book. He really goes way back into history. So I think we're actually talking about like the Roman era who goes back into um, up until like present day. And I have just never come across a book like that, especially one that is focusing on the UK. I don't know why I'm gonna, you're gonna hear me say this so many times about focusing in on the UK, but it's just like, obviously I, I say obviously, I used to read a lot of like non-fiction books that were centered around black history, but in the US, and that is obviously still so important. But someone living in the UK, obviously I want to know more about um, black people living in the UK. So I'm gonna give you a little bit more insight of what it says and blah, 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 what the book is about. It says here, black and British is a vivid confirmation that black history can no longer be kept separate and marginalized. It is woven into the cultural and economic histories of the nation and it belongs to all of us. Um, it draws on new research, original records and expert, expert testimony. Um, black and British reaches back to Roman Britain, the medieval imagination, Elizabethan blackamoors, and the global slave trading empire. Hey guys, editing Sandra here. When I was editing this clip, the audio started going really weird for the rest of the section when I read it out, so this is what I actually said. It shows that the great industrial boom of the 19th century was built on American slavery and that black Britons fought at Trafalgar and in the trenches for both world wars. Black history is woven into the cultural and economic histories of the nation. It is not a singular history, but one that belongs to us all. I thought the book sounded incredible. Like it just sounds completely amazing and I genuinely cannot wait to read this. 
So moving on to some fiction recommendations. I am going to recommend the author Mike Gell in general, but I'm going to sort of hold up this book and also talk about another book that I read of his recently. Mike Gale is so I don't want to go through like all the authors and be like oh this is how they're British like obviously you can search them up and I have researched them because like these authors have been like in terms of some of the books in this like um video they have been in my Amazon basket for like over two years because when I did a bit of research around like black British authors and that I wanted to read so that's why I have them on my list but you know obviously you can like vet them yourselves if you want to but I just want to talk about Mike Gale because like I really like him um but I think he was born in Manchester and then moved to Birmingham or it's the other way round. Um, so he like he's not a London author or anything like that and he writes a lot of fiction and um, books which I think they coined the term as laglit because he writes from the perspective of males. The book that I just finished reading by him is The Man I Think I Know which is told from the perspective of two men and that's just a really nice book about like male friendship and sort of um, disability and just dealing with sort of changes in life, things that in life throws you a curveball essentially. I just really enjoy Mike Gale's writing and I think if you're looking for something that's light but also does deal with some sort of topics that everyday topics in life you know dealing with perhaps turning 30 turning 40 you know the breakdown of a relationship in this case it's actually the um dealing with sort of poverty um but also um adoption it says right here that one of the characters here is adopted and never looked back in this specific book like Kerry contacts nowhere because they are adopted sibling again not spoiler because it's all in the back and sort of dealing with those sort of topics so it really he really tackles a variety of topics in his book in a way he reminds me a little bit of Jacqueline Wilson and the sort of topics she used to cover in her books or probably still covers I don't read any of her books anymore now um but yeah I just think he's such a great author I feel like I've just rambled in a very roundabout way about him but I have read at least at this point about five books by him and I've honestly really enjoyed the majority of them like all of them to be honest so he is one that I definitely recommend and if you're looking for one that's a bit of a tearjerker Half a World Away is definitely it The Man I Think I Know is actually really good as well and then I have read I feel like it's there's two books it's turning 30 and turning 40 and for some reason I've just read turning 40 and not turning 30 um and also perhaps I've read the life and soul of the party all really great books by him so if you're looking for a really light fiction read um I would recommend Mike Gale the next book that I want to read that I've had on my radar for a while which actually when it came out I didn't because I just thought it was a book about the sort of slave narrative written again by like another white person which is not to say that's not why I wouldn't read it I just have really stayed away from books that have written about the slave narrative that's just so painful to read. I'm just like, I don't really want to read that anymore. When I found it was written by a black British author, it did actually then pique my interest a little bit more. So this book sounds like a sort of murder mystery, but it's obviously she's on trial. Um, so basically I think the main character Fanny is on trial for the murder of her master and his wife. I'll read you again a little bit of the blurb so you can get a proper understanding of what this book is about because honestly it sounds so good. Um, so it says, All of London is abuzz with the scandalous case of Franny Langton, accused of the brutal double murder of her employees, renowned scientist George Benham and his eccentric French wife Marguerite. Uh, crowds pack into the courtroom following every twist, blah, blah, blah. The testimonies against Franny are damning. She's a seductress, a witch, a master manipulator, a whore. But Franny claims she cannot remember, she cannot recall what happened that fateful evening even if remembering could save her life she doesn't know how she she came to be covered in the victim's blood but she does have a tale to tell a tale to tell a story of a childhood on the jamaican plantation her apprenticeship under a debauched scientist who stretched all bounds of ethics and the events that brought her into the benham's london home and into the into a passionate and forbidden relationship Th though her testimony may seal her conviction, the truth will unmask the perpetrators of crimes far beyond murder and indict the whole of English society itself. It just sounds so good. So I feel I just have to put this on there in case that's something that sounds of interest to you. It's definitely one that I want to get to really soon because it actually, in terms of it being sort of about the slave narrative and historical fiction, it's not the kind of book that I would naturally like um, lean towards. But honestly, when I read the blurb, I was like, that sounds so good. So again, another recommendation that's going to come as really just an author that I have read a majority of the books and I'm recommending the author you go check her out and see what kind of books you like by her is Dorothy Coombson she is well loved in the UK I feel like you know she has about 16 books I think I've said this so many times when I like make videos about her like at one point it's going to be 18 and I'm still going to be saying 16 books but the book I'm going to re recommend specifically is The Cupid Effect because that is the book that I've given the highest rating um two of all the books that I've read by her. I think I've read six or seven of her books at this point. I actually reread one earlier this year um, and 
it's recommending the Cupid effect, but also the ice cream girls. I think the ice cream girls was actually the, you know, it was the first book I read by her and I was just like completely hooked. But other books by her that you might enjoy is The Chocolate Run, The Flavors of Love. I really, I think I gave this book three or two stars. This book deals with food and that's why I was just like, hey, like, and also I love writing about food, like I'm so into this. And another book I also enjoyed by her is Marshmallows for Breakfast. The Cupid Effect is one that I really enjoyed because actually it was quite funny as well as being like a romance sort of love story as well. Um, because it doesn't just follow the traditional trajectory of it just being a love story between a boy and a girl. There's so many other aspects of like other people in her lives and how she sort of facilitates love in that aspect. So that's what makes it sort of a really nice well-rounded story, but also quite funny because you're hearing about these other instances of other people. Again, I will read you a bit of the blurb so you can get a better effect um better better knowledge of what the book is about this is one i actually want to reread quite soon because obviously i read this in 2013 so it's been such a long time since i read it and because i have been rereading some of dorothy coonton's older works i want to go back and read this just to make sure that i still do enjoy it so it says here seri d altroy watches too much oprah winfrey and is ha and it's having serious repercussions bordered london life and writing yet another have a perfect orgasm feature she's decided to take oprah's advice and follow her heart's desire going back to college might not be everyone's dream but all seri's ever wanted to do is lecture Unfortunately, Sari's new start seems to involve disrupting lives. Within days, she's reunited a happily uncoupled couple, encouraged her new flatmate to do something about his unrequited love, and outed the secret relationship of two of her colleagues. Only while K Sari, is it Kerry or Sari? I don't know. Only while Sari is playing Cupid for others, the highlight of her social calendar is trying a new hair conditioner. Something needs to be done, but can Sari stick to her vow to give up accidental ma matchmaking for good? A delicious comedy about love, life, and following your heart. It's just, it was just such a good book. The memories I have of this book are really good, but obviously, like I said, I haven't read it in what, if we're in, yeah, nearly, well, eight years. So, you know, perhaps my memory is not as great. It's definitely a book I wanted to recommend, especially because Dorothy Kinsum has written so many other books. So if that doesn't like sound like your kind of book, I would definitely recommend checking out the rest of her backlist because The Ice Cream Girls is phenomenal. Like The Ice Cream Girls is about actually two, two girls that went to secondary school together and, um, you literally find this out in the beginning of the book and on the back of the book one of them is being released from prison so it's like fast forward right into that and you're sort of finding out the events that led to, up to her being in prison and sort of what happened between these two girls it is so good and i think there's actually a sequel to it now which i haven't got around to reading because i want to reread the ice cream girls first so another book that i want to recommend that i haven't read but <laughs> i really really want to read is the fat lady sings by jacqueline roy when i was just looking this up um like recently i saw that it's part of a penguin like black and forgotten series or something like that so they have a series of books where um that black british authors are part of and they're just i think highlighting some really old like backlisted titles uh so yeah if you feel like checking that out perhaps i will link it in the description box below if i can find like the actual series link for it but this one sounds so good so it basically is about two women who are locked in a psychiatric unit in london and i think they decide that they cannot trust really their doctors so they start to journal um their experiences and it's through their written experiences that we find out more about these two black women there's a really small blurb here on Goodreads so I also read that to give you a sort of taste of what it's about but it says here locked in the psychiatry unit because her public singing brought her to the attention of the police Gloria meets another British woman of Jamaican descent with whom she can share her past giving them both hope for the future so I don't really feel that gives as much as insight in, as much as what I've read in other places but it just sounds so good because I think it's going to be a very tender book that really explores the difficulties that these two women have faced in their life and the fact that you know they're in a psychiatric unit and cannot trust the doctors that are meant to help them it's just so sad and I know that's actually quite the case along um across the psychiatric help for a lot of people I guess during perhaps the time that Jacqueline Roy might be writing about but it's just of particular sadness. So the next couple of books I'm gonna recommend are books that I have read and I think I'm just gonna blast through them very quickly because I can link you to like sort of videos where I have spoken about them before if you're interested in reading them. So the next book I'm gonna recommend is That Reminds Me by Derek Wasu. If I remember correctly, this is like a, no, no, it's not Poetry in Birth. Um, it's very poetic, but it's prose. Um, and it's based on, well, he uses a lot of the sort of themes from the Anasi spider mythology, which is quite, um, it's a West African mythology, basically. And it is about a boy called Kay, who is in basically the foster system or care system in the UK. And it's about his experiences um, of his time there, but also what his home life was also like. 
it's very poetic and I have done a, I feel like I have done a review about this book so I will like link it in the cards and down below if I have um it's what well, I think I gave this three stars and it's one that I definitely need to reread and I want to reread it in physical format because I got this as a net galley arc um it's not one that I think everyone will love but it's one that I'm recommending because I completely love Pirate Train because just because it's not something that I completely fell in love with it might suit someone else's like um poetry reading style another book I want to recommend along the same vein is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson I read this earlier this year so I do have a review video about this book but it reminds me a little bit of that reminds me just because it's very poetic but it poetic in a way that I actually really vibe with um that reminds me I found quite difficult because it was really hard for me to tell what was happening some of the time. Whereas Open Water is just so beautiful. It's essentially a love story. It's a very short, so it's a novella, I would say, or maybe it's just a little bit longer than the novella. Um, short story about two black um, British characters, a, ma a man and a woman, and they're sort of them falling in love, but then also the sort of perhaps like disintegration of their relationship. But it just involves so many more themes than that. It's really capturing the sort of lives that these two characters live, the dreams and aspirations they have for the future, um, police brutality in regards to the man. Um, not that it doesn't happen to women, but specifically because a lot of this is told from the man's perspective, we get that. And we just really get the ins and outs of how they feel about the development of their relationship. It's beautifully written, it's honestly so stunning um, and I just couldn't let this go by without recommending it because I know it was one of those like really hyped up books for 2021 and rightly so it's absolutely beautiful. Going back to a straight poetry collection, one that I want to recommend is My Darling from the Lions by Rachel Long. This was a co collection that I gave three stars. I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would but there were certain poems in there that just really got me that really spoke to the sort of black British female experience um, and particularly talking about things like getting your hair done <laughs> um, I just remember there was a very stunning poem in there about that and it was just so good and um, on the sort of Goodreads blurb about the book it says here described as a narrative collection in three parts my darling from the lion threads the experiences of learning and unlearning shame the body sex faith blackness lineage prophecy and healing I'm pretty sure I've also done a review video on this so I will link that as well for you but yeah when I did my review I said this collection namely embodies a mixture of themes namely blackness sex and family and it was good I said here that 30% of this book I found wasn't for me but as I got past this I did find there were a lot more um, poems that I could relate to or poems that I really really enjoyed the sort of construction of and the themes that it included Another poet that I want to recommend is Yusa Daily Ward. She currently has, I think, two collections out with one collection that's probably coming out in November. Um, but her first poetry collection, Bone, I absolutely love. That was how I came into contact with her. And then her second poetry collection, which is a mix of poetry, but also a mix of prose, um, which is called The Terrible. She is such a beautiful poet, like such an absolute wordsmith. I just, I love her writing so much. Um, she was born in, I want to say Manchester, at least around those sorts of bits, I want to say. Um, and she writes sort of about what her life was like there. And there's a lot of like poverty in there, sexual assault. Um, she was adopted like by her grandma like, because her parents like sort of weren't around. Um, there was sort of trauma in the family in regards to that and she talks a lot about her brother and the sort of like trauma that he's been through in the life like he sort of leads and it's just so vivid so fascinating so heartbreaking but like i said she's an excellent wordsmith the way she crafts words together and creates imagery in your mind is absolutely beautiful so i would definitely recommend two of her poetry collections like i i just i love her <laughs> so coming away from poetry collections i'm going to recommend three other books um and i'm just going to run through them very quickly the first one that i'm going to recommend is keep the receipts by the receipts podcast it is a podcast by three women so um tolly audrey and melena tolly is from nigeria Audrey is from Ghana and Milena is from Colombia um, and they I absolutely adore their podcast which is why I read the book and in the book there's a lot of talk of like the black British experiences especially from the perspective of um Tolly and Audrey uh, I really enjoyed it it's a lot of it is very personal so that again that's why it has a really good element of what it's like um, to be growing up as a, Brit a black British female in London the book is split into different themes so there's friendship love um 
I think self-love, but things to do with the body, just really things about what it's like growing up being a woman and experiencing different things, so like relationships and stuff like that, and family, and also work, um, what it's like in the workplace um, as a as a black woman. So it's a really enjoyable book, like it really made me laugh, and if, you know, I don't know if you haven't listened to the podcast, if you will enjoy it as much, but I listened to it on Audible and it really just felt like an extended version of their podcast, and I just thought it was really, really good. Another author that I want to recommend is Frances Mensah Williams. I have done I think two reviews on my channel now about two of her books um, and I just really adore her books so I am mainly recommending From Pasta to Pigfoot and then she also has like a part two from Pasta to Pigfoot which I haven't read yet. I have read her book Imperfect Arrangement and also River Wild and I do have videos talking about those books. Frances writes a lot about being um, a black woman in Ghana or a black woman who has like obviously Ghana in heritage and what that sort of and what that's like. From Pasta to Pigfoot is about a character named Faye who has I think she was born in Ghana but like has spent the majority of her life living in London and it's sort of really funny like she gets into this sort of relationship with this guy who basically like tries to like call her out on her like blackness or um Africanness and it's about her exploration of who she is and she goes back to Ghana I can't remember now the reason why she goes back to Ghana but she goes back to Ghana and sort of experiences Ghana for herself you know as an older woman that she is now and it's just about that exploration of her country and its history but also how like you know that dual sort of heritage how she's putting that together in her day-to-day -day life when she does go back to London and then Imperfect Arrangements is so nice because it's actually set in Ghana and it's talking about relationships um three women their friendship but also their relationships and River Wild is also set in Ghana um, and it actually focuses on one character I can't remember what her name is now but it's talking about her life in Ghana and sort of she's an estate agent and one of her goals is just to own a house that's all she wants but obviously she's being pressured um, from family and stuff to marry and sort of settle down and it's about how she navigates that so yeah, those are all the books that I wanted to recommend in this video. Trust me, there are tons more. I have read so many other books by like black British authors that I absolutely love. Like I can just think of now off the top of my head that I haven't mentioned, like Taking Up Space and um, The Black Girl's Bible or something like that. Guys, I've read so many and there are obviously so many other books that are not on my radar, but these are the ones that I really wanted to talk to you about that I thought were really worth sharing. But like I talked about in the beginning of the video, I will be giving away two of these books to two separate people um, so if any of these books spark your interest please do look at the description box and see how you can enter and yeah all the details will be in there about when it closes and things like that thank you guys so much for reading happy black history month and I'll catch you in another video bye